Hello and welcome to part 3 of our tutorial for new players for Dominion 6. In this part we'll be going over how to set everything up on your first turn as well as going over recruitment, research and actions. Again, this episode might be a little slow for those of you with some experience but if you want to brush up on your knowledge stay tuned otherwise I'll hopefully catch you for the next one. So we need to decide what we're going to do for our first turn. Every turn you want to remember three things, research, recruitment, and actions. These are the main things you want to be deciding every single turn. Before we begin, I want to highlight some options in the preferences that newer players might find useful. If you go up to the options tab here on the top right of the screen or press escape, then go to preferences. Under gameplay, I like to enable map move on commander tokens and also multi-turn movement. This just helps you move around your territory over the course of multiple turns without having to give an order every single turn. I also like to enable give orders to new commanders automatically and show tips when starting the game. This will just give you some helpful tips for when you're playing by yourself. So let's come out of that now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about research. So what is research? Any commander with a magical path can perform the research action, which will generate you a certain amount of research points, or RP, per turn spent researching. The amount of RP an individual mage creates each turn is determined by their total magic paths times two, plus five, and then applying any bonuses or penalties. By clicking on the research button on the top right of the screen here, which looks like a little laboratory icon, or by pressing F5, we get to the research page. Here you can see the six regular schools of magic as well as blood magic. I put blood magic into its own category as it has spells that only mages with blood magic paths will be able to cast. The other six normal schools will have spells for all other magic users and we'll get onto this more in a little bit when we go over magic in more detail. You can right click any of the schools of magic to see what spells are unlocked at each level of research. Every school of magic has nine levels of research you have to go through to unlock spells for it. Every single spell has a path requirement and potentially a gem cost associated with it as well. We'll go into this in more detail later. Simply scroll down to the end of the page and press exit or hit escape to go back to the magic research page. In order to add the next level of a magical school to your research queue, simply click on it. This will then research up to the next level of that magical school. You can have more than one research allocated to your research queue at one time, and it can be from the same school here. So if I click Conjuration twice, it'll bring me up to level two. Alteration once will bring me up to level one. If you have no research queued up, all generated research points will default into Conjuration. As it stands for Middle Age Ulm, I want to get Construction 1 to start making magical items and Alteration to make our god more protected in combat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this research queue. I'm then going to click construction once, to add construction level one to our research queue. And then I'm going to click alteration twice. So this will automatically allocate the research points to construction level one until we get to the point where it's researched. Then it will begin allocating research points to alteration levels one and two. If you're playing another nation at home, you can choose whatever you want. I think for Om, um, this is a decent opening. With this, our first few turns of research is complete, so we can click exit to get out of this view. Our next part to remember is recruitment, so you can recruit commanders and troops from any province that you own. Select your capital, and then click on the recruit button on the top right that looks like a castle, or press the hotkey R to open the recruitment screen. From here, there's quite a few options, but don't be discouraged. Every commander or unit requires both gold and resources to recruit, the number of which you can see when you mouse over them. Commanders will require command, commander points to recruit on top of this, while normal troops use recruitment points instead. You can see down here at the bottom we have many more recruitment points than commander points in this province. You'll have a lot more troops than commanders, especially as middle age on. The top window shows your commander recruitment, where you recruit your commanders who you directly move on the world map. These can be separate into broad uses, scouts, commanders, mages, and priests, with a few commanders being able to do more than one role. 
Note that any sacred unit, such as priests or sacred troops, also require holy points to recruit on any other requirements. We'll get onto this a little bit more later. To recruit a unit, simply left click on it to add it to the recruitment queue. You will immediately pay the gold cost to recruit it, and if you have enough resources, commander, or recruitment points and holy points, you will recruit that model and it will be ready for duty next turn. If you do not have enough gold to pay for a unit, you will not be able to queue a model for recruitment. If you lack anything else, it will, it will take more than one turn to recruit that model. Let's add some master smiths. I'm going to clear my recruitment here, and I'm going to click on master smith twice. There. Now we can see that we're recruiting two master smiths. You can see that one of these master smiths is greyed out. The reason for this is we do not have enough commander points to recruit both master smiths this turn. So we will pay as much as we can of the other requirements, and that smith will be half recruited until we get our commander points next turn. Most capitals only have two commander recruitment points, so don't worry if it says minus two. Ulm's capital has three commander points because it's a citadel. Let's not worry about that for just now. By right clicking on one of these master smiths, we can then access its unit card, where we can see its combat stats up above, as well as its magical paths, research ability, and special skills. Mousing over them will give you a small text description of what they are. You can right click on any of these skills to get a more detailed view of it. These smiths will greatly help our research and increase the resources in this province. Let's move on to our troops. Let's exit out of this page here, back to the recruitment page. Troops cost a lot less than commanders to recruit, but they cannot move on the world map by themselves. They must be led by a commander. Let's recruit some infantry of all. Any of the variants are fine. I quite like the battle axes, which are these ones here. But you can recruit whatever you want, or if you're playing along at home as another nation, recruit, have a little look through your units, decide which one you like the look of, and just get some. You can left click to add one to the recruitment queue, or shift left click to add 10. Let's add 10. So I press shift, and then click on the infantry of all. You can see it's added 10 to our recru recruitment queue. You can see that we only have enough resources to recruit six this turn, which is fine. We'll get more resources with our smiths and by conquering some territory. You can also choose to repeat recruitment for both commanders and or troops. So you recruit the same number of commanders and troops every turn. This helps uh, lessen the micro requirement to go through every province to make sure you're still recruiting units from it every turn. For now, we're going to leave them off. But if you want to leave that on so you don't have to remember next turn, that's absolutely fine as well. If you ever want to reset your recruitment to what it was at the start of the turn, click this Reset Recruitment button. For us, this will clear everything we've done, so probably don't do it just now. Click Exit when you're ready to move on, or press Escape. Now let's move on to Actions and Commanders. To select a commander, select the province that they're in. In our case, this is currently our capital. And then left-click on the little box on the left side here. This will select your commander. If you want to select more than one commander at a time to assign actions to all of them, you can control click to add just that commander, or shift click to add that commander and all of those in between the two original ones. If it would work. There we go. Got there in the end. A little bit of technical difficulties for everybody. By pressing the current action for a commander or using the hotkey space, you get to the action list. Defend, up here on the top. Defend is the default action, where a unit will defend either the province that it's in, or if the province it's in has a castle, defend the castle walls. They will If they are defending a province, they will automatically fight anybody that comes into it. However, if an uh, enemy army comes in, they're defending the castle walls, they will not fight them outside the walls. Patrolling a province is like defending it, but the unit will also hunt down people unhappy with your rule, and reduce unrest in the province by forcibly stopping their ability to resist by killing them. This will obviously lower your province's population. In order to patrol, units will have to leave your castles and they will then fight outside of it if your province is attacked. Pillaging 
let you rob a province, increasing unrest and giving you gold and your army some supplies. Useful sometimes in enemy provinces you've just taken. Try not to do it in your own or provinces you're wanting to keep. Empowerment lets you use gems to increase a commander's magical path. And blood hunting lets you collect blood slaves for blood magic, neither of which we'll do at the moment. So coming out, let's select our commander. So I'm going to control click to remove him from the group, then click on him to select only him. Now with him selected, we can then left click on another province in the map to move him to that province. He will then move to that province over the end turn. If that province is your own, he will simply march there. If it's an enemy's province, then a battle will ensue to get control of the province unless there is no defenders. So be careful what you march into. For our commander this turn, we're going to choose the Become Prof option. So by clicking on his current action, we can see the sacred Become Prophet action. This is a special action. You can only have one prophet at a time, but he will now become your god's right hand man. It gives him priest level three or plus one to his priest level, whichever is highest. If we click on become prophet, you notice that by giving him this order, it has written, overwritten the previous one, which is good. We don't know what might be waiting for him down in Jankeep. Let's get a better idea. So our scout here, Herman, who I will control click to get rid of him from the group, then click again to select. Our scout is similar to our commander, but he can't lead troops, he cannot research, and he cannot preach our dominion. He does, however, have the stealth ability, which we can see by right-clicking on him and coming over here to see that he's stealthy. This means that he can move unseen throughout the map, and he can move through and into enemy provinces without having to fight what's there. Let's move him to Iona. So by having him selected and then clicking here, we can see that the arrow to where he's moving now is gray rather than red as it was for our commander. This lets us know that he's sneaking into that province. Once he's there, he will hide and report on what he sees. Now for our pretender god, the great earth snake. Let's give him an order. So first of all, we'll click on him to select him, and then we'll open up his list of orders. Being a mage, you notice that unlike the other commanders, he has the option to research, cast ritual spells, forge magical items, and perform alchemy. We'll go over all of them later. For now, let's get him to start researching. He will now start generating us research points to use in the research screen. We can see the amount by right-clicking on him and seeing that he researches 8. A lot of you might be saying, oh, how, hold on, he's a really good mage, he's level 8, level 7. How does he have such low research? Most monster pretenders have the inept researcher feet, which means they're not very good at researching. Not a problem, our other mages will be able to help him next turn. Okay, and with that, we've just finished our preparations for our first turn. That was probably a lot to take in for now, but once you've got a few turns or games under your belt, you'll know what to do almost by heart. Just remember, research, recruit, give out actions. That's the strategic layer of the game. Once you're ready to proceed, click the end turn button on the top right of the screen or press the E button. And there you go, you've just played your first turn and set your opening moves for complete domination. Hopefully this was helpful for guiding you through the main strategic loop of Dominion 6. Stay tuned for next time where we'll go through troop management, some basic scripting of armies, and finally some battles. See you there.